Hello, this is Cube Watermelon, aka Mary Cagle, and this is my tutorial on how I do lineless art. And lineless art can mean a lot of things, but in this case I'm talking about a style I use sometimes that's kind of cell shaded, kind of like my normal stuff, but with no lines. Um, I had an old tutorial about it, but it's kind of outdated now and someone wanted to see a live demonstration, so I'm going to do that. Um, I went ahead and brought in a sketch since I already showed how I do sketches, so I'm just going to turn the opacity of that down and keep it on a layer above the flats. And it needs to be on top of them for reasons you will see. So the first thing I need to do is just block out the flat colors. And it doesn't super matter what colors I'm choosing right now because I just need to be able to tell them apart. We can go in and pick the actual colors later. And I'm using the pencil tool, much like when I ink normal stuff. It's just going to be a bit different shortly. And it doesn't matter how thick I'm going, since these are not going to be actual lines. They're just demarcations. This is probably a part I could speed up if I had the right kind of software. But I don't. And maybe it's... some people want to see it at actual speed. It shouldn't take too long. But, as soon as we get a solid shape, which will happen shortly, boop. then wait, let me just go ahead and make this shape solid, yeah. Then I just go in with the fill tool, bam. And you gotta make sure that all layers is not checked, in this case, since then the sketch would interfere. So I basically just need to go in and do that for all of the parts of the figure. So we need to choose a separate color for the jacket. And while I'm going in and making selections, I might use the magic wand, just because then I select this area, and then I can draw and not worry about overlapping. So for these I have to have slightly tighter sketches than with my other stuff because the shapes have to be very strongly defined, or else I'm going to get all effed up, because it's hard to tell exactly what you're doing in this stage, in terms of how it's going to look at the end. Oops. So again, that's somewhere that I just use the magic wand so that I won't color outside the lines. Since I already defined that shape with the black.
since the nose is actually the same color as the skin, I'm just going to make that a slightly darker version so I can see it when I'm doing the next part. Then if you turn the lines off, you've got this. So the next step is pretty much the same way that I do my stuff with lines. I make the... Wait, one sec, I gotta fix this, it's not good enough. Alright, I just gotta make a new layer. Call it shades. Set it to multiply. And start really defining things. So what I just did is I checked now. Now I actually do need sample all layers on for the magic wand. So that I can select areas like this. And then I can just boop 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 boop. Oh and something I just did is I hit control H to hide my selection so that I can see exactly what I'm doing without the marching ants interfering with the way it looks. All layers check for this part. When I'm shading the what do you call this part, the cornea, I usually end up turning the opacity down a bit because it looks a little too harsh if I shade it at the same opacity as everything else. Pencil tool, fill, select, 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 pencil tool, pencil tool, pencil tool, fill, fill, fill. Now for parts like this I might turn the sketch back on to see some of those shapes that I defined. Here's one of the harder parts to figure out. come in like this and then come in with the white and take it back out. Hair is one of my favorite things to see how different people render because there's just so many ways to do it and so many ways to stylize it. If you follow my Twitter, I've been doing a lot of drawing girls with hair that isn't hair, because I also think that's super fun. <laughs> so 
Say so again, these strokes only look good because I use the Lazy Nezumi plugin. It is a lifesaver when it comes to inking big strokes like this. Now what I'm doing here is just switching with X between the um, white and the shadow color to bring in shadows and then peel them away a bit if I need to. That's okay for the shades. So now I'm gonna do the same thing I do with other pictures and make a screen layer for highlights. And I'm just gonna come in and take the base layer's colors and use that as the highlight. That tends to look pretty good. with exactly where I want this highlight. I went ahead and made the eyelashes black because it always freaks me out when... Like some people when they have crazy hair they'll also make the eyelashes that color. And that looks crazy to me. I don't like it, animes. I've seen you do it. I'm a pass. Oh, tablet's freaking out. It happens. It could happen to you. I dropped her. Pencil. I keep mixing around how I highlight hair. Maybe this one I'll just do the big boom. Beep. Here. Something like that, maybe with a her. And bam, there's a little line list drawing. Um, something that I would do sometimes is around the flats, I would just go to a layer style stroke and then you can give it a little bit of an outer stroke to... I don't know, give a kind of interesting effect. But I wouldn't always do it. I actually kind of like these colors for her, but mess around with them a bit. Meh, that's fine. <laughs> so anyway, that's how I'd go about something lineless. Uh, it's so obviously it's very similar to how I do most stuff. I think it just requires a little more confidence in the shapes that you're making. Because they have to be very well defined when you don't have the lines there. And it's not something I'm super skilled at. But there you have it. Um, again, as always, if you'd like to see tutorials about anything else, or if you have any other questions, just hit me up wherever. I'm everywhere. I cannot be escaped. And I will see you next time. Where's the thing? Here it is.